Hello, today I'm going to tell you another terrible story. This is the story of Tealy Palmer um, from Australia. And just a warning, there are some disturbing details in this one, so just a heads up. Tia Palmer did not have an easy time growing up. She was in and out of foster homes since she was really young. Her mother, Cindy, her birth mother, um, admits that she had a very, very difficult time as a parent. She voluntarily took her kids to the Department of Child Safety um, because she knew that with her domestic violence situation at home and all of her other issues that it would be the safest option for her kids. That's what she believed. By the time Tia was 12 in 2015, um, she had been in and out of so many different foster homes, I believe nine different foster families, um, when she ultimately in January of 2015 went to the Thorburns. There was Rick, the father, Julene, the mother, and then there were two teenage boys, Joshua and Trent. Trent was 18, Joshua was, was 19. At 12 years old, Tia was a typical 12-year-old. She loved hip-hop dancing. She loved cheerleading, animals. She had a ton of friends at school. She seemed on the outside to be doing pretty well. She also loved horseback riding, and the Thorburns had some horses on their property, so, you know, it, it was great. Also, the two teenage boys were really into dancing as well, so they all took, you know, dance classes. And like I said, from the outside, see, things seemed to be pretty good going pretty well for Tia. October 30th, uh, 2015 was a Friday, I believe. And on October 30th, Rick drove um, Tia to school like he normally did, dropping her off at school between 8.10, 8.30, around then. Um, but later in the day, her school called the home to say that Tia had not been attending any of the classes that day, which was very unusual for her. Police, for some reason... I mean, they, they went looking for her, they went searching, they interviewed a lot of um, students at the school, but for some reason they didn't actually tell the media or the public about the disappearance or show her photos or anything that they normally did until November the 5th, which was days and days later. Obviously, you know, hours and days count significantly in missing uh, children's cases like this. So... They were really scrutinized later for this delay. Later that same day on November 5th, when the public was first notified about this disappearance, Tia's body was found in half-submerged in the Pimpama River. She had almost nothing on and her body was very, very decomposed, making it difficult to determine cause of death. There was a vigil held um, a few days later where hundreds and hundreds of people attended in order to mourn Tia's. And on November the 14th, there was a funeral held uh, where she, everybody wore purple to commemorate her. To, to Police were interviewing everybody, especially since she had apparently been dropped off at school that day. You know, hundreds of students from her school were interviewed because police were under the assumption that she had been planning on skipping school. On February the 15th, there was a reward for $250,000 offered for information leading to any arrest. On September 13th, 2016, Rick's car was seized by the police. Rick, the foster father, was charged with her murder on September the 30th. Police had been given a tip, an anonymous tip, by somebody who said that Trent, the son the 18-year-old teenager, had, had sent this person some Facebook messages talking about how he had a relationship, is what I'll call it, with Tia. And he had worried that she might be pregnant. So here's how it really went. October the 28th, two, two days before they had claimed that she had gone missing, on October the 28th, 28th, Trent had sent his cousin these Facebook messages saying that he had slept with Tia and he, at first he claimed that it was all Tia's fault and that she had threatened him if, he, I mean, he had abused her and he was worried that she would tell everybody that he worried that she was pregnant because she had been complaining of some stomach pains and he thought, okay, well, I'm going to go to jail. He thought my parents are going to lose the income that they get from having her as a foster child. And Trent's mom, Julene, found out about this, and so they had a talk. And it's just awful. It's just terrible. 
the family basically had this like family meeting uh, when they found out that Trent had been abusing Tia. And so when Rick found out, the father, he thought, you know, you're you're definitely going to go to prison for this. They all were convinced that she was pregnant and that she would tell everybody. And so they so Rick told his wife and sons to leave the house. He said, make sure you go somewhere that you can be seen. So Juline went to her sister's house and the boys went off to dance class. They left Tia alone with Rick. Later that evening when they came back home, Rick said that it was all taken care of. He had obviously killed her and put her body in the shed. And then he, the whole family went to bed. They all just agreed to just kind of help protect Trent. So on October 30th, the next morning, he actually did drive to her school um, to make it seem like he was doing his normal little routine. And he went to do some errands and then he came back home. And then he, um, you know, was called by the school and they went along with the story that, that she must have disappeared from school somehow. And then later that evening, he took her body to the river. When the family was all questioned about her disappearance and tried, you know, they all went along with this story because, like I said, they were protecting Trent, they were protecting Rick, and they just had all agreed as a family that they would do this. There had been this tip-off to the police and so to get more evidence and to kind of figure out what had happened, they bugged the house. Somehow they put a like a recording device in their house between August and September of 2016. And they ended up recording a lot of stuff about the family, talking about how they were going to try to deceive the police and keep this secret. Rick pled guilty and he therefore didn't have to have any trial, so he never had to... So he wouldn't have to plea, uh, explain what he had done in detail. He was sentenced to life. Trent was charged with perjury, um, attempting to obstruct justice, and incest. He was sentenced to four years, but he got less. The mother, Juline, and the other brother, Joshua, were charged with perjury and, uh, you know, trying to obstruct, obstruct justice. And they each got a few months in jail. So Rick was actually also charged with abusing two children from Juline's home daycare. Juline, so she had this home daycare during this whole time. And there were obviously all these little kids in their home. And it was supposed to just be Juline who was, you know, the person in charge. But she allowed Rick to be left alone with the kids often. Um, when she was out doing things, she he would be there. He was unemployed. And he also would drive them to school sometimes, which is where some of this abuse took place. These were like a four and a, an 11 year old that he essayed. When questioned about this by police, he suddenly said that he had complete amnesia, that he had no idea, no memory. Obviously, it's a lie, but they also caught him on a prison phone call between he and his wife, um, you know, talking about how he was planning on just telling the police that he didn't recall. So in 2021, there was an inquest into Tia's death because they still needed to know or wanted to know, you know, what, how did this happen? Rick's initial story to the police was that that evening, Tia and he had gotten into some kind of an argument that he couldn't remember. And he said that he she tried to run away. And when he went after her, she was screaming. And so he put his hand over her mouth and that must have suffocated her. It, that's not what happened. He then also claimed to not remember anything. And he used the old amnesia excuse. From what they could tell, it, she had been choked or asphyxiated. Police also assumed that he that Rick also had abused her um, because she was found with very little clothes on. And he also had this, you know, these other charges showing that he liked young girls. Rick is still in jail and hopefully he will be forever and or prison, I should say. And the um, Juline and the other boys are off living their lives, carrying on like usual, like nothing happened. It's just terrible.